Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech. We're going to take a look at the HP Touchpad WebOS interface. So let's go ahead and turn it on. We do that with the little sleep-wake button there. We've got a couple different notifications on the home screen. I've got someone telling me happy birthday, so appreciate that, sort of. And we'll take a look at the interface here. Now I like WebOS. I've been using WebOS on and off since the original Palm Pre launched on Sprint. I actually switched to it for a while, and I really like WebOS. And it needs a little work here and there, but on the tablet it's pretty good. So we've got a 1.2 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, dual core, and this has 32 GB of storage, and it's pretty fast. It does stutter from time to time, but let's take a look at it. So we've got a couple different concepts going on here, and I'm going to show you in landscape mode, uh, but you can use this in portrait either way. So we have a gesture area around here. This is also touch sensitive. So what this means is we can swipe up and what we get is our different apps and settings. Swipe up again and it goes away. I can do the same thing by pushing this button here or pushing the physical button right here. They all do the same thing. It's how we want to do it. We just get to pick. Now, what we can do is use the card system, but before I do that, let's show you the little settings. Up here, we can also swipe down. We can see our battery status, the date, time, and we also have Wi-Fi, VPN, Bluetooth, all of those settings, and our brightness adjustment. It's all conveniently located there. It's pretty nice. So we'll go ahead and tap the screen to get rid of that. And as you can see, every time I tap, you've got this little kind of uh, water ring that appears when you tap water. Let's go ahead and open the web browser. Now, we have a card system in WebOS, and what that means is we can have multiple things open, and it multitasks very well. So let's go ahead and go to Zolotech, and I find that this, this actual touch screen works very well. I was going to say touchpad, uh, but the touch screen works very well, and you can see the, the browser loads quickly. It loaded my site very quick, and we can scroll. I don't know why it's not all loaded, but you can see kind of the traditional thing we saw on iPads and iPhones a while ago with the little squares before, or checkerboard pattern before it fills in. So the pinch to zoom works very well. We can tap just like you'd think to go to the next screen, and it's fully flash enabled, the browser. So we can watch YouTube using the flash site as opposed to HTML5 or a YouTube app even though it does have a YouTube app, YouTube app. If we double tap the text, it will bring it full screen. And let's go ahead and hit play. You can see the, the status swinging around, and it loads. Now, it does stay a little bit choppy for a while until it kind of buffers, and then it works pretty well. So overall, the flash works well, and it actually doesn't consume as much battery as I thought it would, given all of the, the stuff around what Apple has said. I thought it would use battery, battery a lot more than it does. It does consume it faster, but, but it lasts pretty well. It seems to be a, probably a 10-hour tablet just doing normal web browsing, but I don't know about with flash. So we'll leave this open for now. Let's open something else. Let's open another web page. And we can do that multiple ways as well, but we'll just do it this way. And let's go to HP's website. HP's website is coming up. And you can see the, the screen's loading. Now this site itself appears to have flash on it, so it's taking a moment to, to fill in this area. But while it's doing that, it's going to load. And you can see it's loading live in this tile, or card. Now what if I want to stack these cards? I can do that. I can move the card from in front to behind it. And when I'm done with it, I can simply throw it off the screen to close it, or I can bounce it, which is kind of neat. Let's go ahead and open a browser. We'll open email. You can see it froze for a second, and I'm not sure why it does that. And HP recently admitted that after that whole thing that happened with them saying they're no longer making the touchpad, they're going to be be uh, doing some other things. They actually said that they were able to get the get this OS running faster on an iPad 2, which I thought was interesting considering this technically, or at least we think this has a faster processor. So we have email, we have the browser. We'll go back to Zolotech. Email, browser, and We'll open this, and uh, I guess we'll open their app catalog. 
So we have all of these open at the same time. And we'll go back to the browser and we'll go into email. What these sliders allow us to do is resize. So now we just resized. We've got the emails that we have currently and this will be the message. So if I tap on Facebook, it will show up in there. It takes a second. I want to delete that one so I slide sideways and hit delete or I could hit the button down here, the little trash can, and hit delete. It does the same thing. And it's my birthday. They're wishing me a happy birthday again here. And we have that open. Now we can go back to the browser very quickly. We can switch back to email. Now if I want to resize it again, I can do that. And I can, um, I think I can go here. No, I guess not. But we, you get the point. You can full size, read your emails full size, resize everything. Works quite well. And when we get a new email, we get notified up here. You can see there's a Facebook square here. If we tap on that, there's people wishing me happy birthday. I'll tap on that. It will open a very nice Facebook app. But while that's opening, let's go ahead and look at the store. So they've got this Pivot 02 thing going on. Uh, I'm not sure what that's all about. I haven't looked at it too much, but I guess it's like a, a store magazine almost is what it appears to be. Let's go to Categories. And this is their app store. Now, surprisingly, they have a lot of apps. Not so many tablet apps, but they do have a lot of apps. And enough to kind of get you going. Unfortunately, there's no Netflix. And Netflix doesn't run Flash. It actually runs Microsoft's Silverlight. So there is no Netflix on here. Hulu did work originally, but Hulu has since blocked it using the web browser for whatever reason. And so you've got a bunch of different things like Time Magazine. If I want to install that, I just simply hit free. It downloads right here. It gives you a little status bar. And we'll go over here. See it locked up again. It does this once in a while. There we go. And now we're into the Facebook app. So all of these are integrated. I believe HP or Palm at the time helped make the Facebook app. I don't know that Facebook wrote it themselves, but it's a very good app and I like it a lot. Up there we were just notified that Time Magazine was installed. So you kind of get the general idea of the OS. Now we do have messaging which works well also and it uses Synergy and you can set this online, offline and these are your people you're talking to. It has Skype integration. It has uh, a couple different things as far as uh, notifications go with this also when someone messages you it appears up here and it has Skype and AIM and I think Yahoo it's all integrated into one and it's part of what HP calls Synergy or what Palm used to call Synergy. We have a photo app I don't know that I have any photos in here it's loading so I have wallpapers let's go into wallpapers and you can see there's a bunch of different apps. It's pulling from Facebook, but since I don't want you to necessarily see all of my photos, I'm going to swipe that off the screen. So we'll get rid of this and this. And obviously the more things you have open, the slower it's going to be, but it's pretty quick. And you do leave those open. It will lead to a drain on battery life if you're signed into Messenger, for example. And it's got to constantly ping back and forth to see if someone's active or they send you a message. But it's really not too bad. So you get the general idea of the interface. Let's go ahead and rotate this so you can see. It takes a second there. But same idea. Let's zoom out a little bit. Same idea. Works just the same as you'd expect. Nice and quick. I'll show you the rotation again. So it's fairly quick. And it's a nice tablet overall. There's a couple other things we'll check out in a later time during the review, but overall that's the basic user interface. Now if any of you that have you been, been using WebOS for some time would like to share some tips that I may not have shown that you might have for this for even speeding it up. I know there's some, some hacks or tweaks that you can do that will actually speed this up even further. Uh, due to its ability to save a ton of different things and cache files to help it not crash. I know there's a way to turn some of that off to make it really fast. So if you have any tips for that, please feel free to comment below and let us know. Other than that, though, I think it's a great buy, especially at the discounted price they're going for now. Thanks for watching, though, and again, comment if you have anything to say about it and what you think about it. This is Aaron. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.